industry collaboration is key for the success of 5G for media. 5G will target not only mobile but any device. The replacement innovation cycle on, on, on mobile is much faster than in, in any other media industry that, that happened before, right? High quality of experience, personalization, and low latency. So, will 5G be the first global media broadcast platform? Is 5G the opportunity for network convergence? Is 5G going to replace DDB? 5G is adopted rapidly. This provides the opportunity for new media experience. Reinvent your media streaming with 5G. Join us for a discussion on June 25th. Hello, 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 everybody. Obviously, you made it here. So welcome to our panel discussion on how to reinvent your media streaming with 5G. I'm excited to be your moderator today. My name is Andy Waltenspiel, and in my day job, I'm normally advising and challenging innovative and thought leaders of our media and telco industry. And 5G is definitely a topic that's on everybody's agenda today. Now, before we jump in the discussion, a few words on housekeeping. We have a Q&A, of course, uh, but we don't want to wait until the very end because we want this to be as interactive as it can get. So please use the Q&A button here that you see at the bottom of our Zoom webinars to send us any questions you want to ask. And I'm going to read that for the uh, audience and the, and the panelists so we can answer it at any given time. So send us questions whenever you want. This uh, panel is going to be recorded. And since you all registered, you will get an email in a few days. So you can then see it uh, and share it with your friends and colleagues. So now let me introduce you to our three speakers. We have Mikael, CTO of ATEM, Thomas from Qualcomm, Director of Technical Standards, and Jody from 5G Mac, he's head of technology. So dear speakers, please come on stage and join me here. Turn on your cameras, unmute yourself. And hello, everybody. Hi, Thomas, Mikael, Jody. Great to see you. Good morning. Hi, great. So let's quickly go around the table and uh, the virtual table and introduce yourself, your role and the company you work for. And maybe also what are you doing already on 5G? And I let Mikael start. Mikael. Hello, everybody. So I am CTO at Atem, working on uh, standardization mainly. So uh, I'm following uh, SA4 at 3GPP and also 5G Mag uh, for, uh, for Atem. So, uh, I'm quite happy also to have uh, Mass and Jordi uh, participating to this uh, webinar with me. Great, thank you. And uh, Thomas. Yes, thank you, Andrea. Thank you to uh, colleagues from the for organizing. So I'm uh, Thomas Stockholm. I work for Qualcomm. Uh, Qualcomm is US based for the uh, global company. Um, and we have been in the 5G uh, innovation and uh, and kick off since the very early days. Um, so my, me personally, I work in our uh, department that is uh, on standards and industry organization. And so basically my day job is working um, in the standards, but also working with and collaborating uh, globally with colleagues in China, in Europe and the US uh, to identify the opportunities we have with 5G and to bring it closer to the, to the verticals and those who basically um, have applications to be built on top of 5G. So we were looking in connecting the media industry with the distribution and innovation platform of 5G. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. And last but not least, Jordi. Hello, I'm Jordi Jimenez. I'm the head of technology of the 5G Media Action Group. Uh, thank you very much to the colleagues of ATEM for organizing this and for inviting us. And just a few words about 5G Mark. We are a cross-industry association, bridging the media and the ICT industries. Uh, we offer a platform for discussion around use cases, around how to use 5G technology for media in the field 
terms of distribution and also in production. We are launching activities. Uh, I mean, we are market representation partner for TGPP, so we are consolidating requirements, views, and injecting them into the standards. We are also launching activities in terms of uh, software development and so on and so on. So it's a, a starting journey at this moment. Great. So now let's jump in. And of course, what's better than to show a few numbers about where are we with 5G? So we all know that 5G is taking off. Some of you might even have a phone or share the, the famous speed test that you took somewhere on the street. So we have more than 140 operators who have launched it already. More than 300 are working on launching it soon. And you see on this slide, big, big, big numbers. I want to draw your attention to one of those numbers, and that is this one. It's not the 1B that it's super interesting here. It's 5G connections by 2023. It's more the tagline below. It says two years faster than 4G. So what we're seeing is a lot of fast uptake, faster than any other media distribution technology in the past ever. And Thomas, this is a slide that that you researched. So maybe I'll, I'll give the, the word to you to also please elaborate a bit on where do we stand on the adoption of 5G and what do you see? Because you're, you're manufacturing quite a few of those devices or the chips that power them. Um, yeah, indeed, Andreas, thank you. I mean, I personally did not research, but we have a team, obviously, who did all of this work and continuously wanted to see what's happening. Um, and I, I believe what it really speaks to is uh, that 5G is a global, a global activity. And um, it, I think it's a great achievement from those who have initiated 5G and uh, going out of 3GP, the, the pre-work uh, to launch this, and also the work now introducing it to in this geopolitical situation where there's a lot of competition across the globe. There's China, there is US, there is uh, Europe kind of in between to have this really global technology. And I think that's this economy of scale is incredible, and it, this also gives you this fast adoption um, ability. So uh, to some extent, there is obviously a lot of uh, collaboration across the globe, but there's also competition in territories who basically attempt to drive these innovative technologies faster. Um, and that is uh, both for, for the consumers, for the users, but also for the technology companies. It's a very important platform. And 5G is obviously... Uh, it's kind of coming along with other technologies that are built at the same time. Um, there is uh, new computing, um, there is uh, new distribution technologies also on the core networks. And all of this comes together to uh, basically have a truly um, integrated innovation platform. And so by, by the adoption, what we see basically there is different, so 5G is adopted globally, but some, um, some areas and some uh, territories are quicker. Um, in certain areas, for example, they go, US is, for example, on the millimeter wave, um, it's quicker, whereas in Asia, you see clearly an adoption towards the sub six and so on and so on. Um, so, and the opportunities are said, the second aspect is not only the mainstream mobile, but it's the verticals. And so the, the verticals is also the opportunity of economy of scale for those who basically want to build onto a global platform for IoT, for public safety, and so on. And I think this all drives these uh, fast uh, cycles, and there's surely other aspects that play into this uh, fast adoption, and we are very happy to see this happening. Thank you. And we're, we're definitely going to discuss about quite a few of them. So 5G has a lot of... Um, here, let me show you that. Delivering on the 5G vision, that's the title of this. And we see many, many different use cases. We're going to focus on the TV and media aspects, but there are other things that drive the adoption of 5G, whether that's in the enterprise, uh, transportation, uh, fixed wireless ad access, public or private networks, and of course, a lot of massive IoT applications. Our focus here will be today the TV and media aspect of it. And also there, we see a lot of use cases and formats that will benefit from 5G, either by enhancing it or even just enabling it. So I would suggest let's spend a bit of time now on what are the, the use cases you see 
that will benefit the TV distribution by 5G. Um, where are we today? And maybe also what are the, the things that still need to fall in place? So who wants to go first about use cases? Maybe uh, Jordi, you're smiling. I can, I can give a start. I mean, I see two, two points here. I think there is a, a point in which we, we can transform, let's say, use cases that already exist, but we can provide added value to them. I mean, we see from, from even from some, some of our members that there are needs to address uh, younger audiences, and younger audiences may not be consuming content on the devices that, that more traditional audiences have been using. So there is a... a point in which we can transform this, we can also leverage on uh, analytics, for instance, from, from the users, how quality of service is arriving to them, uh, well, we can recommend content and so on. So there is a way of transform, let's say, the usual provision of, of for instance, TV and radio services to the audiences, and that is a new field, I think, where you enter into a sort of all new devices that you can find uh, everywhere and that they are not, let's say, based on the traditional market, for instance, of, of TV sets, but any sort of device, dongle, that you can just buy very quickly, you can transform very quickly, you can adopt very quickly, and that allow you to do much more, right? And then we are talking about wearables, we are talking about all what's happening in the automotive industry with uh, car infotainment systems and with connected cars we get more and more uh, connectivity. So there is an aspect here to evolve what exists but also to concentrate on new on new devices and new opportunities. Okay, thank you Jody. I mean Thomas, you work on devices or powering devices. I mean 5G first thing often we think about mobile handsets but that's not all. Can you give us a view on what is the the, the, the breadth of devices we see, and mobile is still maybe dominating, but uh, where are we there? Yeah, yeah that, that's a good point. And I believe on the use case, we need to differentiate between use cases that, um, the, the classic use cases, everything things you get on your phone today, uh, issues that are uh, the form factor of a mobile phone, app-driven, and so on and so on. So that's clearly the, the, the classic use case. And the question is, what can we do there? So. We're looking into use cases of enhancing what exists, and uh, I believe we'll come back to this a bit later. Yes. What are the, and then this is less a use case from a consumer perspective, but it's more uh, a use case or an issue that relates to how you deploy uh, an existing service uh, platform, how you make it better, how you basically enhance it. So well, let's come back to this later. I believe I defer this to later. The second aspect is the issue of new use cases, right? And I, I have personally uh, a, a, a bit of an approach to this. I, I don't believe that use cases as they are developed are never going to be deployed as they are because uh, use cases are very often developed by engineers or kind of uh, a weird thing that you sit down and say, I have an idea of a, of a use case. But uh, what the use cases drive the development of technologies. And then we need to basically enable that those who are the creatives, those who basically are able to make use of the technologies, build the use cases. And we're giving uh, new functionalities, such as uh, lower latency. Well, lower latency is like a catch-all, but what does this give? It, it gives you basically the ability that you can connect compute power in the network directly with the phone. So you can uh, basically hand off compute, compute power in order to do, for example, complex tasks. A complex task is rendering. Where do you need rendering? Well, you need rendering, for example, in gaming. Gaming are complex rendering functionalities. So you're moving part of the rendering into the network. You do multiplayer games. Uh, you do this in, a, in an experience that basically makes it um, imperceptible that you're basically running it over the network. So this is an example for a use case. Um, then there are other use cases that basically uh, build on new form factors, like glasses. Um, you have wearing glasses um, that might basically be supported and powered through a 5G connectivity. So what you get then is new media uh, aspects in place, but you also have other challenges because you, uh, there's power consumption is a very important issue um, in this new devices. The same holds for variables. And then there are obviously the use cases that go beyond the classical or go back into the, the classical ones. So why would you not use 5G? to be connected to a TV set? Uh, why would you not use 5G to be uh, power 
powering automotive, um, all the way to powering now uh, all the work on NTN, like the uh, uh, non-terrestrial networks, where you use satellites going directly through 5G technologies to end devices. So again, we building in 5G uh, technologies, a uh, technology platform, and I hope that the, the use cases and the applications, there will be creatives uh, just using the technologies and do things which we don't even know yet. And so I look forward to all of this. Okay, great. So, Mikael, what role is Attempt playing in all this? In these fantastic yeah. use cases, enabling the creatives to do really fancy stuff? So the goal of ATEM here is to, to provide the, the best quality of experience in terms of video, trying to reduce the, the bandwidth as much as possible. So either by using new codecs, so that's, uh, that's uh, where we are working on. So we are working on BBC, for instance. That's uh, one way that we are uh, pushing uh, to lower the, the bitrate. We want to increase also the resolution by lowering the bitrate. So that, that's something that can be enabled by uh, 5G because the bandwidth is higher than uh, with 4G. Uh, we are also working on low latency, so we are using CMAP for that to command format for both uh, Apple and uh, Android devices. And we, this is something that is part of the, the 5G media streaming approach. And we have a software CDN that can be, uh, can be used to, 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 to provide, uh, let's say, the content uh, till, till the end. And we may discuss other mechanism that, uh, that 5G uh, is enabling, but uh, broadcast or multicast is one mechanism that we, we want also to push. In the case, there are many people uh, looking at the same content on the same cell. So that's something that we are looking at. So the, from the very beginning till the end, we have many uh, components that we can uh, provide to our customers on this particular uh, 5G platform. Okay. Um, well, and, and something that uh, Thomas was mentioning before, the, everything is now uh, the cloud, microservices approach is also something that, uh, that is really important. And we, we put a lot of computation uh, as close as possible to the, uh, to the edge. And even if we are targeting 2D at first, uh, that's, uh, that's something that we are already, already doing at the time. Okay, great. One thing you mentioned is, and it's also in the title, 5G media streaming. What is in under that umbrella? What do you see there? Which kind of applications? So they are unicast. So what uh, what Jordi was mentioning before is that we want to target. Uh, we want this platform to be uh, uh, more like what people are looking at today. So they are looking at Netflix. They are looking at Amazon Prime. So they they have a platform where it is dedicated to them. And this is something that is quite important. And this is where people are, are looking at. So even if we are doing broadcast or we are, we are using some old technologies uh, from the past where we want to uh, distribute to many people the same content. So for instance, for sports, here we are reusing as much as possible personalized TV. And this is quite important. When you go to Netflix, you have uh, your own environment. So you can have the same thing with this kind of platform is that you use OTT most of the time. And in the case there is a need for OTS or the, the, let's say the, the broadcast part of the OTT, you can still also use it. And that can be used. So we, we spoke about cars at some point. So when you are in your car and you want to see a particular event like the Olympic Games or the Euro Cup, like what we have today, you can be in your car. You could be in your car, which is not the case at the moment. So it, because you are not receiving in mobility the, the content in broadcast, then you, in general, you, you don't have the, the quality of experience that you need for this kind of, uh, of event. So mm -hmm. you stay at home, but in this case, with mobility, you could target uh, uh, something that is really nice and you could uh, spend your time in your car uh, instead of uh, being at home uh, for, for this kind of event. Okay, thank you. And by the way, we have a first question here. Dear audience, don't be shy. Send us question. We'll try to answer it. It's one from, I hope I say the name correctly, Balaji Nagalgave. It's about multicast in 5G and whether it is in EMBMS or what kind of ecosystem would be available around EMBMS for media streaming. I don't know who wants to answer that one. 
I'm happy to take it. Uh, uh, this, is a, this is a good question, uh, despite I need to dissect the question a bit uh, in, in different pieces, right? Because I, I believe there's a bit of confusing. There is media streaming, there is uh, MBMS, there is 5G broadcast, there is multicast, there is uh, MBS, there is NR. So there's quite many terms flying around. So um, we, we, let's, let's be uh, clear first on a couple of approaches that have been taken in 5G. So 5G is traditional, or 3GP is traditional building technologies for mobile network operators. So um, giving the ability that you can run uh, cellular networks and then you use this as for the distribution of services and so on and so on. And obviously we all know that video is like 70, 80% of the traffic going on 5G. However, the, since basically release 14, and then also with migration from release 14 to 5G, uh, verticals and, and verticals have been started to be more and more important. So basically, <coughs> one of the verticals that was started is the ability that you can use 5G or 3GP technologies for the purpose of doing broadcast. Um, but what does it mean? It's not a broadcasting for an operator to do capacity enhancement. It's basically being able to do the traditional classical block broadcasting. Um, and so that part basically speaks to uh, broadcasters, broadcast network operators, um, that basically would be able to run um, a distribution of their networks, existing networks, high power, high power, to directly access modems on mobile devices. So that's the 5G broadcast. So basically that's one ecosystem that is enabled. So it would be a direct distribution of uh, media using your existing infrastructure, high power, high power potentially being um, augmented with uh, gap fillers and, and more cellular distribution, but basically allowing this to directly go to mobiles. What is the pitch for this? I mean, you would say that has happened uh, 10, 15 years ago in Italy. There was DDBH, there was media flow, Qualcomm, you made it wrong then, why do you do it again? The different piece is really that um, it's expected to be the exactly same physical uh, technology and modem. So the, the barrier of getting this into a mainstream devices is much lower. And so we see a lot of interest. And once you do this, it basically gives opportunities, and that's, I think, we're going to speak later about collaboration. So a collaboration ecosystem. So you now integrate, for example, the UHF band into 5G. It's not that you give it to mobile operators, but it's basically broadcasters can now distribute the media you can optimize. So that's one part of the ecosystem. And the second one, quick to say, 5G media streaming would be, it's more for an operator to uh, monetize or collaborate with those who are having the content and the service and the media to distribute um, the, uh, media and the services to, to end users, to their customers, in a way that it's better quality. So if you're an m and and you might say, I have special agreements with the media provider, let's say T-Mobile in Germany with uh, ARD. And so that would basically be the 5G media stream. That, speaking to the collaboration, but it would not change the technology and it would be an, an operator, MNO distribution, right? So th that's basically on a high level. I believe we'll get to this a bit later on some of these collaboration aspects and opportunities, but I want to really differentiate these two ecosystems. So the one speaking to the broadcasters as a vertical, the other one speaking to the MNOs who by themselves basically then um, have a distribution platform that they offer for third-party content providers and services. Thank you, Thomas, and thank you, Balaji, for the question. Now, obviously, there are quite new media formats or new devices. If I think about what some have launched, Vodafone, Deutsche Telekom have launched Unreal Glasses. Of course, this stuff is powered by 5G with the 5G handsets in collaboration. Now, uh, great, sounds perfect. But if I'm, an, if I'm an operator or if I'm a broadcaster, what do I need to do? And is it the right time now or should I wait? What are the things I should consider if I want to go 5G? If I'm one of the 300 or maybe if I have not started yet? Jordi, what do you think? I mean, I would perhaps provide a very 
general answer to this, but what we think is needed, and that's also something that, well, together with uh, Michael and, and Thomas in, in Pajima, we, we are trying to achieve is we need to spread, uh, let's say, information about what 5G can do for media, because normally, uh, let's say, all the news that, that we see, uh, well, you, you present or, or 5G as a as a general term, right? But 5G can mean many different things and even more, as it has been explained already. Uh, I mean, we see 5G as a toolbox of, of features and of things that, that you can apply depending on, on, your, on your use case, depending on your application. For instance, in the media streaming, there are, there are many, many tools that, that you could apply, that you could configure depending on the different arrangements and so on. We have uh, the entire ecosystem of, of, of 5G broadcast, as Thomas has also uh, been explaining and so on. So it's kind of, yeah, this, this general, uh, let's say, ecosystem where you can do, where you can do many, many, many things. So we need to understand what exists. We need to understand what this technology can do. And also, let's say, interact with those uh, developing the standard, developing the technology, so that we create this kind of mutual understanding. And in the end, well, we, uh, let's say the media industry have the tools available in the standards and the standards are made according to the requirements and to the, let's say, the wishes of the, of the media industry. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so some evangelization still to be done. I think uh, this is some of that we're contributing today. Um, Mikael, from your point of view, what needs to happen? What are the questions I as an MVNO or I as a broadcaster need to ask myself if I want to do 5G? So the, uh, I would say what, what services you want first to deploy and uh, what kind of, uh, let's say, application at the end you would like to have is quite important. So the, uh, the interactivity, as said before, is quite important in 5G because you have, uh, let's say, uh, higher throughputs and also uh, a lower uh, ping. So when you interact with uh, the ADN, uh, you have a lower ping in the end. So that's uh, the main uh, focus. Uh, the mobility, the any device is also important. So you can target any device with 5G. Uh, the personalization to me is really important in the end, but that's something that we can do with fiber. There is also the, you can reach people that you cannot reach uh, with fiber or with a higher throughput in the end. So that's uh, for some of them that will be quite important as well. Uh, there are for some operators also, uh, let's say, stadium or uh, events that they want to, to target. Uh, there will be some of them that will, uh, will like to have uh, this uh, kind of uh, the deployment of our stadium, that's also something that the people are looking at. And, and probably convergence is also something that uh, they, they, they may look at at some point, and uh, that's something that 5G Mag is looking at, but that's, uh, that's really something that uh, people are, are looking at in the end. Uh, 5G is going faster than, than the others, like what uh, Thomas was, uh, was saying, when you go for, for the UVT, or you have to wait for, for at least five years, uh, before the equipment are there. In the case of UDP, it's going faster. You have the equipment and the, 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 the standard is running at the same time. So that's, uh, that's really something that is a bit different in, the, in between the two. Okay. Uh, and, then, and then everything is moving to OTT. So that's, uh, we, we reuse also something that is already, uh, already available today uh, for this particular uh, deployment for the, for the Okay, thank you, Mikhail. Um, Thomas, is the time now or is there still sense to wait? Is there some uncertainty whether this will really fly? It seems we're going really fast. Um, so what do you recommend people? I mean, if they're, if they're not so, yet going ahead. Uh, I, I hope you don't expect to say wait, right? So, uh, actually, Who knows? <laughs> That's what, no, uh, I, uh, and the time is surely there, uh, but it, it, it's never going to be uh, black and white or switch on. It's something that we have 4G still, I mean, 4G is everywhere. So it's not that we say 
Uh, there's a switch from 40 to 5G. There, there's a greater introduction of new technologies. At the same time, for example, you also get enhancements uh, in all of the IEEE standards for, for Wi-Fi, um, which is an important aspect for some, some areas as well, especially for XR, all XR devices today are powered through uh, IEEE 811 ax for example. Um, but the move to 5G is happening. So it's always the right time to move forward with new technologies and innovation, right? Okay. Um, but I understand there is some complexity in doing certain um, new business cases. Um, XR is a the question, what is what, for example, is XR all about, right? So Qualcomm has launched uh, operator, XR operator roundtables that uh, operators globally can connect and share um, views um, on trials, on introduction, on first services. Um, they also basically, we get uh, those who are creating the services and innovation to basically speak and develop it. So this is basically developing ideas. It's, um, it's related to 5G, but it's a bit... Um, independent, it's more overarching, but again, I spoke about this before 5G, we consider this being a, a technology platform that includes AI, ML, XR, and so on. And so on. Okay. So surely that is the right time to invest and um, engage, um, use new technologies. You talked about the Unreal, that's the first operator launch of um, being able to have an AR experience, right? So it's surely something that we need to understand better how it's accepted, what people will pick up, um, and so on, and so on, and so on. Okay, so right. The so opportunity is surely there, right? So, uh, and um, one aspect we are trying to do, and working with Hordy, we just launched it this morning, uh, what needs to happen also from the community that is used to operate globally, when we speak to the media providers, to smaller ones, that we give them all of the hand, uh, tooling in hands that they can quickly kick off services, experiment, and so on and so on. So beyond the specifications, what we're trying to do is also getting more into open source development, reference platforms, that people can more quickly introduce services into their environment. So, um, and that speaks to the openness of mm -hmm. 5G, uh, which is an important aspect, because um, having open platforms, open uh, APIs, open specifications, it enables that smaller players in the field can more easily and quicker get access to these innovative technologies. If they would be blocked and only have to go through the large aggregators, I think there is a, that's a bit of a downside. Obviously, there's opportunities by all of the great companies um, in the US through Facebook, uh, Oculus, and so on, Google. But the opportunity to have more open interfaces basically allows to, um, to, 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 to deploy services also independently quicker and maybe introducing also your own flavors of this. And for us in Europe, I think this is one of the issues we want to maintain our culture and our uh, self sustainers Okay, thank you, Thomas. So the time is now, dear audience. And I see a lot of very good questions here. And one of them says, so if all this is so cool, will it kill, for example, DTT? There was a question from Jérôme Hero. What about the future of DTT networks, 5G with multicast OTT streams? Are they seen as a real DTT killer? I mean, I put that in our little trailer this morning. Will 5G kill DVB? I mean, it's, is it something that you see happening? And maybe uh, Mikael, uh, what do you think about it? Is it complementing? Is it a killer? Is it a threat? Should I be worried about my existing DTT network as an operator? It's good. Uh, so the, I, I'm not saying that DVB uh, will be killed by that because there are already some, some work ongoing at DVB that are quite important for 5G and for the convergence of the, of the media over 5G. So, the, so DVB is working on two technologies that are, that are quite interesting, at least uh, for, for, for the deployment over 5G. One of them is a multicast ABR that is used for delivering the multicast, uh, could be used for, for, for delivering the multicast over 5G. Uh, and the other one is DVBI, uh, where you have a receiver that, uh, that is uh, purely agnostic from the, from the network, so you can receive from DVBT2, DVBS2, or uh, 
uh, with the same equipment or move to, uh, to another uh, channel that can be over internet or over 5G. So these particular technologies are ongoing at, uh, at DBTV. So they, they can be used for 5G, so that's quite important. And there are also collaboration with uh, night, DBB native IP that, uh, that are also collaborate in the same way because they want to deliver the same signal uh, to the end. So when I say signal, it's not uh, all the same modulation, but the same, uh, the same service will be delivered to the end, uh, and then the mobile or the device will adapt to itself. Okay. In the case of T2, then uh, that's, that's uh, something else that uh, can be a debate in between uh, people that are already moving to T2 and those that may be having a convergence in between uh, what 5G broadcast can do and over over high power high power for those that may move uh, in this direction. It's probably also a question on in which country are you, what is the, the state of adoption, and that will drive some of the discussion. We probably can have a, 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 a separate panel on <laughs> DVB-T, DVB-S, will it be replaced by 5G? Are we all going OTT and broadcast? Will it still have a future or not? From discussions I had with operators, in, most of them still see a future for DVB and broadcast in the next uh, couple of years. But there was another good question from Emmanuel Vigo. Uh, great, Emmanuel, you could finally make it. So one is the density of antennas required in order, for example, have 4K uh, TV reception. And the side question is, if I don't even have GSM signal in my country house, why would operators even be interested to put the dense network everywhere? Who wants to take it? I mean, I, Jordi. I can... I can take perhaps a little bit of, of uh, I mean, in order to answer, let's say, the 4K uh, TV, I think, well, it depends. It would depend, as always, also on on other standards, because, uh, I mean, that said, but the broadcast is not, it is it's a broadcast standard, so you would need to know how many channels, how many 4K TV channels you want to deliver, what is your coverage target, if that's for, uh, let's say, consumption in home with your rooftop antenna or if that's for for uh, somewhere else on the move and so on but the question is that for instance for for the same kind of setup that you would have at the moment for a kind of DVD, DVD2 network if you would put there a G broadcast or an MBMS uh, transmitter uh, you would do this uh, right away let's say with, with the same density of antennas and so on depends how many channels you want to deliver and and also I think and, and that would be for Michael the the the, say the codec that you use in order to, to, to deliver this 4K and we see a lot of evolution also in codec. So in the end codecs plus the transmission system plus the expectations, how many services do you really need when we also see audiences perhaps moving to, to not, not only linear but, but other things. I think when you compose all things together, uh, you see that things, uh, I mean, that all this magic system uh, starts to, to make sense. The other thing in terms of the coverage and so on, of course, there is a, a, a commercial implication or a, the deployment and so on. And that's where also, I think, uh, when it comes to the verticals, I mean, the push, the traditional push or the traditional scope of the technologies have been on telcos, but there are more services also offered to, to, to the needs of the verticals and so on, where there may be other opportunities to collaborate, to invest in the networks, to collaborate in terms of um, network deployment and so on. So there are many possibilities, much more than perhaps with other uh, more traditional standards that were targeted, uh, not to this, uh, let's say, global universe of, of technology that TGTP is developing. Okay, thank you, Jordi. Uh, but do we believe that 5G will really be everywhere, even in the countryside? Does that, commer does that make commercial sense for the network operators to have 5G really everywhere, or will it be mostly in the cities? Uh, I think, uh, well, I, I'm, I'm not, let's say, an expert from the, from the telco side, but I think it, it depends in the end on, on, on investment. Let's say there are also needs for extending, for instance, rural coverage and so on. And there will be 
that have investment not only come, coming from the private uh, sectors, let's say, but also incentivated by, by government and so on. So the thing is that we are also in an early state of 5G, as we have said, 5G standards develop, develop, and develop, and the 5G that we are talking about today is not the same 5G that will come in two, in two years or in, in two DTPP releases that will still be branded as 5G, so that needs to be taken into account. But the, there is an evolutionary path, and the current coverage of 5G or the current implementation of 5G, I think, have little to do with what we will see in, in, the, next, in the next years. Okay, thank you. So, a um, lot of good questions. Um, looking at the time where we're advancing quite rapidly. So, you mentioned convergence of network before. Is that a threat or is it an opportunity rather? What's your view? Thomas, maybe that's one for you. Yes, I, I think we, we, we talked about this before. So let, let me move a bit into the uh, issue of collaboration models, convergence, the topic. And there's a couple of questions I want to pick along with this as well that I hope I can answer by doing so. So we, I, I, previously I separated the, the broadcasting that, that speaks to the broadcasters, those who have broadcast networks and spectrum. So let's move now to the operator aspects of convergence, collaboration models, and so on. So, so first of all, um, today we developed uh, specifications in release 16 under the umbrella of 5G media stream. 5G media streaming is basically unicast exclusively in release 16 with the ability to get access to the 5G core and radio technology for media distribution, or at least to have a, a simplified approach to this. So now we need to understand what does 5G radio and core provide? 5G radio and core provides, uh, for example, a, a quality of service approach. Uh, there was previously very much focusing on an IMS based approach in release uh, in, in, in 4G. So now this is more accessible through open APIs and functionality. So 5G media stream is a set of specifications that basically allows somebody who has content, third party content, to get easier access to the QS functionalities on the system. Um, that, for example, when and QS is one aspect, somebody was asking, can you set up slices as a third party provider on a 5G network? Yes, that's a possible collaboration model. So you can basically um, have application traffic being dedicated and treated independently. That might be a separate QS, that might be a separate charging. So there is very clear technical interfaces, APIs provided. It's now that the collaboration and business model would set up how this is negotiated between a content provider, let's say a BBC, and a distributor, somebody like Vodafone, and so on. So, but the, the basic idea is to have more open interfaces for this collaboration models. Other ones is that an MNO acts as a, a telco CDN. So you're basically uploading your assets and the telco MNO operates as a CDN. Now, uh, in th this is the starting point. Now we're moving forward, release 17 is heavily looking into how you can integrate point to multi-point into an operator's network. Uh, we're not speaking about broadcast in the classical sense. It's a capacity enhancement that the operator can use to distribute multicast traffic more efficiently over radio. So there's different layers. So I'm trying to be careful of what I'm saying. Point to multipoint would, for example, allow that you have a stadium. And in the stadium, you have many uses. In that environment, you would distribute uh, in, in a way that you do one to many distribution of the radio. But if you, if you have a, an area where you have just one user in a cell, you would distribute the multicast on a point to point because it's more efficient. So basically, there is this flexibility of layers being provided. The chair introduction of multicast basically um, allows you to multicast into 5G networks. And multicast is a promise to enhance efficiency. 
but it's something that needs to still be shown um, also from a, from a service point of view. And many of the services today are not multicast, they are unicast. And that's where we go back to the convergence of the networks, because the convergence on the media side is happening. We all going into a, a unicast-based streaming built on SEMA, built on um, adaptive streaming, um, and so on and so on. And so even the TV industry, DVBI, Mikael was talking about, is, is in this area. So the convergence network is basically to allow to distribute this uh, content for us. And the, the last point I wanted to say, why is this so attractive? Because the end devices are all built to operate with this CMF-based apps. You can play back in a browser, you can play back in Android apps and HLS. Uh, iOS and so on and so on. So that's really then the conversion is also that you reach as many devices as possible. And so 5G media streaming is really not a revolutionary protocol. It's a set of smaller components with open interfaces such that collaboration models are enabled. And um, the deployment is up to those who basically want to then collaborate. Right? Okay. Thomas, thank you for this. You talked about quality of service. Let's talk also about quality of experience. And I think that's where Atem is contributing quite a bit. Uh, what, can we, what can we learn about that? What are the considerations and the important points to, to think about, Mikhail? So, as it is a new technology, it will come new codecs, mostly. So, uh, today, the most deployed one is the H.264. But uh, for 4K and HDR, that's also quite interesting because we will have also, with new devices, it's always uh, easier to have the latest technologies. So you will have HDR uh, from the very beginning on these particular devices. All of them will be capable of handling that, which is quite important in the end. Uh, there are also the, the way of doing uh, next generation audio probably on, on this device as well. So uh, at the moment there is the one NGA codec that has been uh, standardized uh, within the uh, uh, 5G media streaming approach. They are looking at other codec. So the VVC uh, is one of them. The Alliance is also uh, another codec that they are looking at. Uh, but uh, but at the moment we have a, a bunch of codec that enables uh, the how to, let's say, decrease the bandwidth when, when we go to 4K and 8K, because probably there will be some of our uh, customers that will still look like at, at 8K in the end. The format is quite important, so CMAF is quite important, because we have a single delivery format, uh, which uh, is quite important to our customer in the end, so we are lowering this, this part. Uh, and and the, the way that we, uh, with this particular 5G five, five media streaming, that we can switch between unicast and multicast is also important in the end, that we reduce when we have a big number of uh, people looking at the same content, uh, the, the, the bandwidth that we are using. So that's, that's the point. And then the flexibility of the, of the approach with uh, the personalization, with the, the server size uh, dynamic insertion, for instance, you can. Um, easily benefit that from that, uh, that part as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much for this. Now, uh, we touched it a bit in the beginning. Not every country or even every continent is at the same place of the journey. Some are going sub six, uh, others are going millimeter waves. Maybe Thomas, can you give us an overview of where are the different major parts of the world at and uh, is it good or bad and is Europe playing catch up or are we leading the pack? Uh, wh what's going on? Uh, yeah, I, I, to be honest, I, let, let, me, let me take a little bit of this, but not too much because it's something I, I, I don't have the latest data. I would have to check and go back. Um, what we clearly see is that there's obviously um, an adoption in China. So the, the China adoption is very, very important. Uh, Asia in general um, is, is fast, Korea, Japan, and so on and so on. Uh, in the US, we see also a very, very clear trend of a lot of commitment in Europe as well, right? Um, but um, the, 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 the especially millimeter wave, for example, is a clear US-centric approach uh, to uh, fixed wireless access replacement. Um, Again, we speak about a global technology, so 
it's maybe not even an issue of country per country. It's also maybe operator per operator spectrum is assigned. Um, so that's one important so MNO spectrum. There's other interesting questions. For example, the 5G Mac is looking to this. What is the spectrum with the verticals, right? So where do you get spectrum, for example, for uh, private networks, non-public networks? So how is this going to be done? Is it licensed, unlicensed? Are there white spaces? So these are other aspects that are of relevance for deploying further, right? Um, but I mean, going back to the initial slides, we have shown it. So there is a, a global execution on 5G introduction. And I don't believe we should separate out territories right now. And okay. geopolitics, as I said before, really drives these things significantly. Uh, 5G is a very political, very, very high level political uh, game. Um, the, the leadership in this area is considered as a very, very important uh, asset for territories, countries, and so on. So that's why I, I see it happening everywhere. Okay, I see Thomas needs to be careful. Jordi, what do you say? Well, I, I cannot add much more, but I think it's important uh, to, to at least for Europe, I think, to speed up in taking, let's say, actions, understanding the technology, implementing stuff, not just, let's say, discussing and discussing endless, right? So uh, get to it, try the technology, get involved in trials, uh, and, and we need to push a little bit more in terms of, of innovation, I think, and take uh, well, more rapid decisions. Because in the end, I think, uh, being this uh, global technology, I mean, if you don't jump into the train, uh, others will, right? So it's not that uh, the train is going to wait for you, or you jump and then you find your way once you are inside the train, or, or then uh, the opportunity will just pass. So we need to, we need to, to move and, and inject a little bit of, of energy into our European <laughs> Okay, uh, so dear Europeans, please move now. The time is now. So apropos time, we don't have a lot of time left. Uh, maybe five minutes. So what I would like to see from you go. Let's go around the table. Maybe say, okay, what are the your predictions for the next two three years, or what do you think as a, an outlook? Where are we going? Are we on the right track? Or maybe a few key points that you want the audience to remember. And dear audience, if you still have questions, send them and we'll still try to answer them. So let's maybe start uh, with Mikael. Um, outlook, perspective, where do you think the future is going or some of the key, key learnings of this discussion? Probably a lot to mobility. Uh, I'm still thinking the automatic uh, car is, uh, is driving somehow uh, also our media industry. So the, what will happen or what should happen in, uh, in this domain. So the mobility is one of them. So consuming video wherever we are. Having the way to not look at the timing. So having a, let's say a, a single head-end, simple head-end. That's quite interesting for our customers as well. Uh, and this is where I foresee uh, the future. I, I would like to have more XR, but uh, I, I don't think it's going to be uh, soon. We failed quite a bit of time in this direction. Uh, the, the, the bandwidth is maybe too much uh, for now, but let's see if it happens. We will be ready for that as well. Thank you, Mikael. Thomas? Yes. Um, so, I mean, I can speak a bit on uh, what I see internally, what I speak, see in 3GPP, what is on the roadmap. A very, very clear indication is immersiveness and immersiveness is i think the important aspect about immersiveness is that it needs to be um, simple enough for users to basically uh, using it without being disrupted um, we had started a lot of work on vr a couple of years ago and vr with uh, headsets being head mounted is a, it's an interesting experience it's just a matter of more it does not speak very much to mobility Walking around with your headset is kind of a quite dangerous issue. Uh, but it is something that is clearly a, a, a trend that is important. So the VR experiences are important. With the introduction.
protection of more glass types uh, environments, um, it's going to be very interesting because that speaks to mobility. So we expecting a, a, this being something coming up of the next couple of years, but there are really very interesting aspects. And it's a technical challenge because um, people want to wear some nice glasses as you have, Andreas. They don't want to wear clumsy issues. So you have to deal with the design of these glasses and the technology, right? And so um, there's a lot of things where 5G will provide uh, enabling technologies. One is very low power consumption, because if you wear a glass like this, and you consume more than one watt power, uh, you will get the sunburn of the glass. So it needs to be low power. So heat dissipation is very important. The second issue is low latency, because you cannot do compute on your device here. You need to basically be supported by an edge and so on and so on. So some network computing. So you will do rendering in the network. And then there is also a lot of issues that relate to you need to be spatially located. There needs to be an environment uh, detection. Then the whole issue of AI and machine learning comes into play. So you, you're basically collecting data. You're sending it back in the cloud. There's a huge amount of signals that need to be processed and turned around. Uh, and again, I, I believe the important issue is that the technologies are kind of, we know what we need to do, but it needs to be seamless for the users that they adopt the technology. It needs to be uh, not being clumsy or bulky, something like asset. So the wish is to have a glass like you have being 5G enabled where um, you basically can dismiss your phone and don't have to carry your phone along with this. And so that's a, that's a very interesting aspect uh, where I believe uh, we will see something happening. Whether this is going to be in two or three years, I cannot promise, but in this decade. Okay, we'll see. Uh, and Thomas, I'll give you the name of the vendor for these glasses. You seem to like them. Thank uh, you. I like <laughs> them. Great. And Jordi, from your side, last comments. Well, from, from my side, and, and I mean, given with our involvement in 3GPP, what I can say is that this is not, this is not going to stop. If you see all the new work items and all the new proposals being submitted to the standards, eh, I mean, the, the 5G is not going to stop, it's going to evolve even more. And I think we are going to see a more convergence into all this network, computation power, cloud, and all of these. I mean, we, we are starting to see this at the moment. And I think also the expansion in terms of devices, other type of devices, or other type of capabilities in the devices, and, and so on. There is, there is a lot of, of movement still to, to expect on, on the 5G side. Okay, great. So we're reaching the end, full hour. Uh, I think we could continue quite a long time and we still and go into some of the details. We don't have time today. The audience, it was great to have you with us. Uh, and thank you, Mikael, Thomas and Jordi for the participation. It was really cool to chat with you audience i think 5g is definitely the time is now if you're not starting jump on the train as jordi said before now the train might have left the station but you can still get on board it's not gonna stop and then uh, yeah thank you everyone for attending and watch the recording share it with your friends and colleagues and see you next time it was a pleasure my name is andy waltenspiel and i was excited to be your moderator today Thanks, everyone. Bye. Stay safe. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.